Welcome back. Welcome to my expert video tutorials. Alright, so we are still journeying through the vector of algebra and uh, wow, the equation of a line and of a plane. These two things, uh, line, plane, oh, it's very interesting, but I will advise you that you have to be extra careful about the concept in the line and the ones in the plane. If you don't take notes well, or if you don't grab the concept well, you see, mathematics is not about you being able to solve, 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 solve questions, solve, solve questions, no. But it's about you being able to grab the, the concept. So make sure that you follow me carefully and follow me carefully well. And jot all the important uh, uh, things I'll be saying, okay? And it will help you. If not, the concept will miss you. Alright, so let's continue. Let's assume we have a Cartesian plane. And in the Cartesian plane, we have a vector V showing here as the V. Alright? And we have our point. That is the initial point and the final point. Interesting. I hope you are following. Alright. And we have a line, and this line is cutting across the initial point and the what? The final what? Point. So you can see that when this line crosses these two points, there will be a point formed in the what? In the line. And that is the initial point and the what? And the other points. The point that is going to form on the line is not only one. The only one, which is the specific one, is the P naught, and that is what is represented as P naught. But the P is representing the other what, points. But from uh, from what you can see now here, you can see that we have two points. But this final point is representing the what, the other points. All right. Then you can also see that the line is parallel to the what, to the vector. So since the line is parallel to the vector, then from your previous knowledge, you know that when we say two vectors are parallel, alright? When one is a scalar macro of the world, of the other. In the same way, if this and this are parallel, then one is a scalar macro of the world, of the other. Here we are using a T to represent the, world, the scalar world, multiple. It can be K, it can be anything. Alright? So where T is the what? Is the scalar. So now we have been given the B naught, which is the specific point, the initial point, to be that and any order. Hey, you see that? Any order is not uh, uh, being specified. And any other what? Point. So that one we are representing it by what? S, Y, and what? And a Z. On the line, yes. They are on the line. So we can see that the vector L. That is the vector of the what? Of the line. When will you get a vector of the line? That is when you take the what? Uh -huh. Final minus the what? The initial. Alright. So you can see that the vector of the line is equal to this. And you can define this to be uh, the final minus the minus the what? The initial. That is the position what? Vector. Alright. So we know the P to be this. We know the P not to be this. And when we subtract, we get something like this. And this also. Alright. So now this is a vector of the what? Of the line. Watch well. Now let's define this B in the Cartesian plane. So the vector here, the vector here, B here, is the A, B, and then C. This A and B and C here is representing the ordinate of the what? Of the vector what? V. And don't forget, be careful. This vector is vector from a direction. Alright, so this vector is a vector from the what? From the direction. Be careful with it. I'll be giving you some uh, keywords. 
you have to jot it down, okay? All right, so let's continue. So we know the vector from the line and the vector from the what? From the direction. So that means that we can say, all right, we can say that, we can say that, uh, All right. The vector from the line is equal to uh, that of the what? Of the direction. But just that one is the scalar mass of the what? Of the other. We know this to be x minus s naught, y minus y naught, z minus z naught, being equal to c. Multiplying this the one from the direction, so which is a, b, and c. All right. So if you have something like this. You can all bear with me that you can write this in the column form to be s minus s naught, y minus y naught, z minus z naught, being equal to that is the scalar multiplying a b c all right so with this we can equate their corresponding what or let's first multiply the scalar inside the vector and you get x minus s naught y minus y naught z minus z naught to be equal to a t B, C, and C, T. Alright, let's continue. Wow, I love mathematics. So now, so now we can get S minus, now we can equate the corresponding what? Co uh, uh, component, which is the X, the Y, and the, and the Z. So we can get S minus S not to be equal to it's y minus y naught to be equal to bt z minus z naught to be equal to ct wow all right so now with this how we can see that we can make the s the subject here and that will give us s is equal to s naught plus at y is equal to Y naught plus B T. Wow. Z is equal to Z naught plus C T. Good. Let's continue. So now, what do you see here? We have three equations. The one for the X, the one for the Y, and the one for the what? For the Z. But there is something that you have to be careful here. And what is that? That thing is simple. Watch what. These equations are called the parametric equation. So this is what we call the para. This is what we call the parametric word equations. The parametric word equations. But you have to take note of some things. Watch what? Do you see the x naught, the y naught, and the z naught? They are the initial points. And check where the vector is. This x, y, z is the any point. And this is the initial point. And the vector is the a, b, and the c. So we can see that if the equation is in the um, is in the uh, uh, metric form, if the equation is in the uh, 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 metric form, then that means that the vector a or the vector s or uh, ordinate will be attached to the what to the t, and the b will be attached to the what the t 
and they see we are tied to the team. So watch. Always, you can see that the vectors are being attached to the T, which is a scalar of multiple, which is unknown. Good. So be careful with it. If the equation is in the parametric form, that's how you see it. All right? Let's move on. Now, from what we have there, that is from the parametric equation. When you try to make T the subject, let's see what we will get. So, from S is equal to S not A plus or minus plus A T. If you make T the subject, you are going to get A T is equal to S minus S not. That will be T is equal to S minus S not over A. And we can also get from Y is equal to Y not plus BT that BT will be equal to Y minus Y not. T will be equal to Y minus Y not. All these over B. Alright. And from from Z is equal to Z not plus CT. We can also get uh, uh -huh. alright. So we can also get CT to be equal to Z not minus sorry, Z minus Z not rather. So when you make the T the subject here, then you are going to get T is equal to Z minus the Z naught, all this over C. Uh, so let's leave it work. So by making the T the subject, we can see that the T is will be equal to the first one is S minus S naught over A being equal to Y minus Y naught over B being equal to Z minus Z naught over C so symmetric symmetric form of Equation. All right. So that is that. Wait. Let me add you something. All right. Welcome back. So that is the symmetric form, and that is the parametric form. There are some terms too. You can be asked to leave it in the Cartesian form, and this is the Cartesian form. The point was placed to this side. Then the the um, the T will be attached to the what? To the uh, the vector. So that is the Cartesian form and that is the component form. That's how we leave it in the component form. See you for more examples. Bye-bye.